You know, Philip, there's there's some conversations I just can't wait for, right? Because, you know, of the um, chemistry, um, because of the connection, and because of the things that not only you're doing, but I want to hear about. So I can't wait for that. But we're in a green room, so let me give you an opportunity to let me know a little bit of the backstory. Like, who is Paul, I mean, Philip, Philip Hatfield, and what is Philip Hatfield up to these days? Oh, I tell you, thank you for having me on the show. I am excited to be here with you. I've been watching your shows, and I tell you what, you've got a great program. Thank, thank you, you for inviting me to be here. But who I am, I'm just another guy just like you, just out here with you know boots on the street, out here just trying to make a living. But, well, I've had the huge blessing of getting to meet Zig Ziglar back in 1993. Changed my life in several areas. Changed my life as far as my personal life, my professional life, and my spiritual journey. But I just had that opportunity to do that. I grew up in the in the business world and uh, was very successful and just became a blessing just to be able to go to work with Zig Ziglar. So that's uh, that's pretty well who I am in a nutshell. I like that. Just one word, one name, Zig. You didn't have, you have to say last yes. name, Zig. Yeah. And that was all good. You know, for folks that are tuning in on this particular episode and may be curious, like, you know, what's up? Well, and what are you going to be talking about? What's on Paul's mind? What should they expect? What type of conversation should they expect from um, from Philip this evening? Well, I tell you what, you and I talked about uh, about two or three days ago. But I do what I really like is uh, it's called contagious encouragement. You think of contagious, and right now we have this contagious virus, don't we? We have it where it's kind of everybody's got fear. It's changed our world. But you know, what if we took something that's got that word contagious? Put a positive spin on it and start being contagious and encouraging other people and how that would help transform our lives and our business and, and even ourselves, our own attitudes. So that's pretty well what's on my mind and that's what I'm working on is contagious encouragement. You know, when you talk about contagious, um, contagious about where we are today, as you mentioned, yeah. um, times that we've never seen before. Um, certainly anyone would agree with me that these are uncertain times. We're going to come yeah. out of an uncertain time. I'm curious, what type of conversations are you having with your colleagues um, right now? And I know for some of my colleagues in the speaker business, their whole business has been wiped clean for the next six to eight months. Um, yeah. Some indefinite dates are there. Um, what type of words and conversations are you having right now? Well, and, and you hit the nail on the head with all the speakers and trainers. We're, we're dealing with people. We deal with large rooms, uh, groups of people. So basically our business is shut down. But just because it's shut down, that don't mean it's the time to despair. This time, it gives us time to go back and regroup, come up with some new ideas, maybe create some new goals, maybe reinvent who we are and where we are and how we're going to get there. But it gives us time to kind of sit back. Don't, don't take that negative attitude of woe is me and poor pitiful me, or as, as Zig always called it, he called it the plums disease, poor little old me. <laughs> you know, a lot of times we do that whenever uh, we get driven to our knees. But one thing that I always say, and I, I love hearing Denzel Washington uh, he said it not long ago. You know what? When you get driven to your knees, just go ahead and say a prayer where you're down there and get up and go to work. <laughs> I like that. Just get up and go to work, which does make a lot of sense. What are you, what are you saying to your clients? I know what you're saying with your colleagues. Um, you know, I had a client that called recently, and it was, it was a very difficult time. They um, they had to lay off their, their assistant. Not lay off, but I guess furlough is the word they're using these days. Um, because he says, hey, Shay, the person supported me for six years but I, I just don't have 45 days in the bank just yeah. to cover the salary. And um, if I had it, I would give it to her before I would take care of myself. I just don't. And so I yeah. want to give her time to, to find work and find things to do right now. Um, and he said it was tough for him. It, it was tough, very, very tough. Another uh, colleague of mine that's at um, the Gaylord had to do the same thing with a larger group of folks. Yeah, And it's tough. So wh what are you saying to your clients that are going through those times or they have to call their mortgage company and say, I, I don't have it. Or they got to call a creditor or a contractor who worked for them and say, gosh, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Well, the good thing is, is all these uh, all these lenders, they know what's going on. And it, it's near not the only one. It, it's going happening with everybody. But what we have to do is we have to kind of mentally prepare ourselves and think of it this way. What does the airline stewardess tell you before she even takes off on that flight? She says, put your oxygen mask on first, right? So you've mm -hmm. got to get yourself ready. You've got to take care of yourself. You, there again, we're talking about encouragement and that as well. But you've got to encourage yourself, motivate yourself. You've got to take care of yourself so you can take care of the team. Because if you're not healthy, you can't help the team to be healthy. We do everything to help the people. And we do. We, we uh uh, I've got a company that I'm uh, doing a lot of coaching for right now. They're based in Frisco. I'm over here in 
in the, the east side of Dallas. And so they just kind of had to adjust the business model a little bit. So they're not going into the store. They can't work. But you know what? The phone still rings, doesn't it? But a lot of businesses, they forget about the phone and they want to do everything by typing an email and then hope the phone rings. But you know what? Business is still going. They've said they had a pretty good month last month by uh, sitting out there and driving hard. Yeah, you know, that's 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 so true. And and wh what are you feeding your mind? What does a, a day look like for you now? I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, we're, we're in the we're in a green room. I know we're going to get going and so forth. But but what does a, a day look like for you now? Because you're not getting on airplanes, you're not yeah. getting on trains, you're not driving different places. I'm just curious. How have you adjusted your day and what are you doing to keep yourself in that right mindset? Well, you know, and, and the, what I do, the very first things what I've done for many, many years, first thing is I wake up and I think of all the things I am grateful for. It's one thing to be thankful. It's another thing to be grateful. Oh, what's I can the, thank what's the you all day long. I can thank you all day long. Thank you for being nice to you, but I can be grateful for what you're doing for investing in my life and what you're doing for me. But when you're grateful, the first thing I do is I look at my bride and, and that she's still in bed or she may be up and moving around. It's like, I'm grateful that I have such a lovely wife who absolutely, uh, I love and adore and who's right there by my side. And I look at all the good things in my life. Now, definitely I go and look in the mirror and that hair is kind of stuck up everywhere, you know. <laughs> kind of look like a little troll doll. So before I even start getting all that together, I start looking at all the things that I'm thankful for and grateful for. And who are those special people that are in my life? Mm, thankful versus grateful. You know, we might not get time when we get going, but I, I know one of the things they call you is the transformer. And um, that's that's really special. Take a moment and talk about the importance of that. And then you can come a little closer to me. You may get a little center so you don't fall off the screen there. So we'll make sure, there you go, there you go, you'll fall off the screen, there you go. Um, but talk about a little bit about the Transformer and, and why that's important. And then we got an episode. We're going to get going in a minute. I mean, the topic we're talking about is more relevant now than ever. But talk yeah. about the Transformer. Hey, pretty well, I got the nickname Transformer, and I'll tell you about that story when we get going here in a little while. Yeah. But when we talk about Transformer, Things about transforming your life. Now, we're in a time right now, like we say with this virus, our lives are going to be changed. It's a forced change. It's something that we didn't get to choose. But are we going to take a positive or be proactive and find a way to work through this? So when you look at things that are transforming, it's like a concrete decision that you've made that I'm going to move forward in another direction or maybe in the current direction you're in. But I'm going to be a little bit more focused. I'm going to plan a little bit more. When you totally take and transform where you are, and Zig always says you are where you are and who you are by what you put into your mind, you can change who you are and you change where you are by changing what you put into your mind. So if this is that time as a transformer, you begin to transform yourself and start feeding yourself the good things into your mind. But then it goes from your mind, it goes into your heart. What goes in your heart winds up coming in and you wind up sharing with other people. Man, I love it, man. I love your attitude. I love your energy. I, like I said, to some I, some conversations I look forward to. For those folks that are out there, like Sean is out there, Andy Harikas is out there, uh, Amber Smith is out there right now, Delphine is out there, Teresa Royal Brown, Chaplin Dow. So many folks are out there, man. This is the conversation. You are the right person. The right bring the right message at the right time for the right audience. And I can't wait. We got to go, man. We got a show. We got to get kicked off. We've been in the green room, ladies and gentlemen. This is where the magic all goes down. But we're going to get going <laughs> in five, four. I love doing this. Three, two, one. It's showtime. Teresa Royal Brown. Thumbs up to you. <laughs> She's great. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, check. Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, we no matter what. Man. Got money on my mind, Man. I can never Man. get enough. And every time I step Man. up in the field, yeah. everybody yes. hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Well, it's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome. 
to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue focused late night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission is to empower, our mission is to inspire, and our mission really is to provide you, the entrepreneur, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that huge vision that you have for the people you were called to serve. And I believe you really have three visions I always talk about. First vision you have is you have a vision for yourself. Um, the organic food that you want to eat, um, the house you want to live in, the maybe for some of you, the car you want to drive. That's fine, but you've got a vision. Uh, it takes resources. That means it takes revenue. Many of you have vision number two. Vision number two is you have a vision for your loved ones, the ones you care the most about. Some of you have kids you want to send to a school of your choice. Others of you right now, you have family that you want to take care of. Even during these times, you want to write a check for their health care insurance. You want to send a check or pay online their mortgage. It takes resources, which means it takes what? Revenue. And then others of you, you have vision number three for the people you were called to serve. An example I always like to share is an example from the Bible, because I'm a believer, you don't have to be one, but Noah in the Bible, and he has this vision, it's given to him by God, he has everything he needs. Imagine he shows up, and then someone says, Noah, he's like, what? We gotta report to you, there is no hammer in the house. Nowhere at all, no hammer nor there are no nails to be found. No hammer, no nails, what about my resources? Nor last time, last call, we checked there are no people, no team, and there's no wood. <laughs> no boat's gonna be built, Nor, work it out. What? And maybe that's you right now, you're sitting right there and you're saying, I've got everything I need, but I don't have resources. Paul, Philip, keep saying Paul, Philip is here, Hatfield's here for one reason, that's to give you the resource. What's up, Philip? How you doing, my man? I'm doing good. How are you, Shay? Man, I couldn't wait. Contagious encouragement. It sounds like a, an oxymoron, man. Um, talk about that so people don't think, here we go, another lottie dotty, lottie yeah. lotty, anybody can party type of thing. Uh, tell us why you wrote the book, Contagious Encouragement, and who is it for? Well, when I wrote the book, I'll go back to when I wrote the very first book. I was, uh, I was at the Zig Ziglar office and came out of the meeting room. We have a meeting every Monday morning. Zig always says, this is the most important meeting we'll have at this office this week. And it was our Monday morning devotions. And Zig says, uh, when are you going to write the book? I said, Zig, you know me. I can't even spell. He said, I didn't ask you to spell. I said, when are you going to write the book? <laughs> so I went home and I told my wife that story. And about noontime, I got home and told her what happened with Zig. She looked at me just right there in the eyes. She said, well, when are you going to start? It's like, you know what I did, Shay? I sit there right there and started writing the book. But I began to learn that you don't write the book for yourself. You write it for other people. Because it's a, it's a laborious task. But when I wrote the book, Contagious Encouragement, we always talk about motivation. And people always said, they would say, oh, Zig, Zig, you know, motivation doesn't last. He said, well, neither does taking a bath. That's why we recommend you do it daily. You know what? But that comes back to encouragement. We don't look at that we need to encourage other people. But the first person you got to encourage is yourself. So you're talking about Noah. Noah not having the other resources. You are the resource, just like Noah was the resources. We have a brilliant mind. We have a brilliant heart. We have gifts and talents that are not that are unique only to us, and no one else can do what we can do with them. You know, you, you talk about in the book that there's a three formula for those folks that are out there, like Philip Reynolds, who's constantly out there, man, just, just a rock star, and Helen, hey, Helen, good to see you again. Craig Talley, my good frat brother up in Baltimore, Maryland. Shout out to you, Fanoop. My question to you for the entrepreneurs that are out there, they're like, okay, I, I, I do at least believe it's going to get better, but how do I encourage myself over and beyond that? Just believing. Talk about the difference between just believing and encouragement. Is there a difference well, between the two? Yes, it is. But let me start with this. Your, your show is called Entrepreneur Show, and you dig yeah. into the entrepreneurs. Let's talk about what an entrepreneur really is. A yeah. lot of times we think if someone opens the door, turns the key, turns the lights on, that they're an entrepreneur. That's not an entrepreneur. That's a business owner. An entrepreneur can be anyone in any field, speaker, trainer, author, business coach, donut shop. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> but you're doing something that's unique. You're doing something that's different. And so when you look at it, yeah, first, you're the only one on the team when you first come out. But I got a buddy. His name is Bob Bodine. Bodine wrote the book uh, called The Power of Who. He says, you already know everyone you need to know to be successful. 
And we do. There's people that are cheerleaders and we don't ever know it because we never tap into that resource of the other people. So when I wrote the book, it's about other people, helping them find their resources of who can help me achieve my goals and dreams and ambitions. But you know what? Before you start looking at achieving your goals and dreams, why don't you help somebody else? If you're helping someone else to achieve theirs by encouraging them, being a cheerleader, the more you're helping them, the more you're learning as well. Now, you think you're the one giving away all that encouragement? But when you see them taking it and receiving it, it's like, man, you get paid back and it's not money. But you get paid back in a wealth of benefits of, wow, I feel good. I have value. Then you start being more creative yourself. Wow. Then you start being more creative yourself. You know, in life, we always take a hit. When I say a hit, you know, sometimes yeah. there's, there's dualities in life, right? There's high highs, there's low lows. Uh, folks might be listening and saying, okay, meet you for the first time, don't know your story. And they're like, yeah. of course it's easy for you to say that, dude. You said you got a beautiful bride. That's a good reason to get up. Wait a minute, you yeah. worked at the Zig Ziglar Corporation. Wow, I mean, what more motivation do you need? Uh, take a moment, if you would, tell me a little about the backstory, a little about who is uh, Philip and, and how you arrived to where you are now. And I think I think that's important so we can, we can set the stage. Yeah, well, I'll tell you real quick, I'm gonna tell you a couple little stories. I'll try to make it quick because I know we don't have much time. But I was a guy, I went to college, and when I went to college, I got this invitation. The dean called me in. He says, you have an invitation to the dean's office. I walked in to see the dean. He gave me the invitation, invited me to leave. <laughs> see, I wasn't attending classes. I wasn't doing the grades. So he said, you can come back in a year or two <laughs> and reapply. So I went out and got a job. The only place I could work was a place called Church's Chicken. And so I went to work for Church's Chicken, and I began to learn some things. Make a long story short, I'd worked up to where I was a food and beverage director of a hotel at about 23, 24 years old. Well, I got recruited. I was in Shreveport, Louisiana, working for the Regency Hotel, being the food and beverage director. And I got an invitation to go and look at a hotel to become the general manager in Fort Worth, Texas. Well, I grew up in Fort Worth, so I wanted to go back there. I said, well, let me go look at the hotel. They said, no, you can't go. I said, if you go, you'll kind of scare the people away. I said, here, here, you just need to, to kind of look at the pictures and, and let's just talk about it. And they brought the owners in. And, and back then, Shay, we didn't have Google. This was back in the 80s, and so long story short, I looked at the pictures, and I decided I turned in my two-week notice. I loaded up the U-Haul, put it on the back of my car, off to Fort Worth, I drove. I get there, and I go and get off the exit, and I saw it over the left inside. It was beautiful, man. It was a gorgeous hotel, the most beautiful hotel in Fort Worth, and here I am, 24 years old. I'm going to be the general manager, so I get to the very top, and I make the traffic light. I look at the traffic light, and I'm all constantly turning to the left, looking at that beautiful hotel. It's like, wow, this is me. And so then I turn, I go across the overpass, get ready to turn right to pull into the property, and then I saw it on the left-hand side. All the sleeping rooms on the first building were burnt to the ground. I'd just taken over a hotel where there was a major fire six weeks before. Five people died. And 33 people were still in the hospital six weeks later. I didn't know what to do. I thought I'd ruined my career. So I picked up my phone and called my dad. My dad's my hero. And so I called my dad. My dad says, Philip, he said, uh, uh, he going to give me his advice. He said, there, there's a book you need to get. And it's uh, a book by a guy named Zig Ziglar. I said, Zig, Zag, Zig. I said, Daddy, I don't smoke that stuff. I don't use those papers. <laughs> <laughs> But I began to read the book from Zig Ziglar. You begin to talk about other people and getting investing in other people, investing in yourself. But I, I started from there and growing up, and, and long story short, took that hotel, me and a team of misfits. We took that hotel, and it became one of the top hotels in all of Texas. And let me ask you a question, Shay. If you knew that a hotel burnt down a year ago, would you want to go put your family to spend a night there? No. no. <laughs> it was a blessing. It was hard work and working with misfit people and me being a misfit manager that we pulled together, work together, and we all learned how to build a business together. So the greatest lessons I had started out from a fire when I was uh, 24, 25 years old. Wow. Wow. And, that, and that's taking you to where you are now. Where I am now. Well, Shay, about 11 years ago, I had a really bad accident. Mm -hmm. I was a, become a very successful businessman and uh, was really blessed. And uh, about 10 years ago, I had a horrible accident. And uh, I was riding a motorcycle, just so that you know. And, and so I'm going north. There's three lanes of traffic going north, three lanes of traffic coming south. I'm in the center lane as I'm going north. And uh, I see a car as it's coming towards us on the other side. I saw it across the white line. So as a motorcyclist, you're going to look that driver in the eye. So I tried to find the driver, look her in their eye. But what I saw was a girl with blonde hair, slung her hair to the right, slung it to the left, slid that cell phone up to her ear, 
And when she did, she got right through the traffic light. And she made a decision that would change my life forever. Her choice changed my life. She turned. She tried to beat the traffic across, run a red light, and literally T-boned me. Uh, in the left-hand side, um, long story short, I, I, I was pretty well broken up. I broke my back, broke all my ribs, my colon and burst, spleen burst from the inside. I literally burst open from the bottom of my chest to the top of my navel. Had 27 breaks from my hip down on my left hand, left leg. That femur bone, the big bone in the top of your leg, it broke in half. And when it did, that part of the leg turned sideways and the bone come out on the inside of the leg. Then it goes up about eight inches inside my throat. Blood clot in my heart, blood clot in my lung, blood clot in my leg. And you know, only by the grace of God did I survive. That's the only reason I made it. Only by the grace of God. But you know what? It was, it was a very tough thing. And, and Almost died seven times in the first 10 days and it been a long, hard recovery. But you know what? When I woke up from being in a coma, I never blamed the young girl for what happened. I didn't blame her. It's like, wow, I'm alive. I was grateful to be alive. I started looking at those things of, of what was positive in my life. Now, I could have took that poor little old me syndrome and went back and, oh, why did she do that? She's ruined my life. Basically, it pretty well changed my life forever. But that... Uh, that's the other thing that uh, that really brought me to where I am today. And was that the uh, basis of the first book, Carried by Angels? Yep, Carried by Angels, yeah. And when I wrote the book, I wrote it under the title. That the subtitle is, My Greatest Tragedy is My Greatest Blessing. And that is what I wrote the book by. And I was just writing about my greatest tragedy being my blessing. And Zig Ziglar's assistant, Laurie Majors, is my editor. And uh, she still works for Ziglar Corporation. Zig has passed, but she's... Tom Ziegler is an administrative assistant now, and so as she is right reading the book and typing it and going over and editing, she's like, oh, Philip, you got to change the name. This has more about angels. And so it's like, okay, so I changed the name to Carried by Angels. But I wrote it as my greatest tragedy is my greatest blessing. So still taking that same positive outlook on life. I love that, man. I love love the subtitle. And what's, uh, you kind of wrapped it up, but if you had to mention one more lesson that you got out of, that you told in that book, Carried by Angels, uh, what's another lesson that you would just share from that book? Bad things happen. Yeah. It's going to happen in life. It's going to happen in business. Your life will be totally changed. Your business will totally change. Uh, I've been an executive of the largest flooring company in the world and no longer was able to do that. Um, things changed. Uh, I went through a long recovery period. Uh, still recovering today. 11 years later, I'm still recovering. But when bad things happen, it's who you are. It's that inside of you. What are you going to do with it? You know what? And there's, as I told you about the book that uh, Bob Bowden wrote, it's the power of who. You look at who are the other people around you. And when I woke up from that uh, being in a coma, I, it was amazing. All the people were there. I hadn't seen in 25 years people who had been there, and I had no idea. Who are those special people? And they're your cheerleaders. They encourage you. They help bring you along. Man, thanks so much for being authentic. Thanks so much for sharing, man. I, I really, really appreciate that. And now you, you, you take your lessons that you've learned and you're now on a mission. If I was asked the question, which I am right now, what's your mission in life? What's your number one purpose in life? What is it? My is to help people transform their life, whether it's their per personal life, professional life, or their business. Let me tell you another quick little story. When I finally did get back to work, it was a long time later, going through the recovery, I had a prosthetic leg. And you know, when you get a leg, they, they don't teach you how to walk with them. Uh, so you give me a, a walker. And so I kind of hopped a little bit. But I decided this day I was going to try to take steps without the walker. I was sitting on my desk. So I stood up and I took two steps to the left. I was at the edge of my desk. It's like, wow, I made it. I stood on my own. I took some steps. So I walked to the front door of my office. I took about eight or nine steps. I got to the front door of the office. It's like, I was so excited. I'm going to try this. I can get to the middle of the atrium and back and nobody see me. So I go walking to the middle of the atrium and I stop and get ready to turn around and come back. And I'm standing there in the middle of the atrium. And all of a sudden, there's this little girl, about four years old, began trying to open the door. Yeah, it's got one of the plate glass doors you see in all businesses. And she's trying to pull the door. And behind her is her big brother. I know he's her big brother because he told me later, I'm her big brother. I'm seven years old. So there's her big brother, mom and grandma. And they pull that plate glass door open. And Shane, when they got that door open, that little girl came in. Her, she had the biggest grin on her face. Her eyes got big as grapefruits. She looked at me, started giggling, and she ran. She took three, two, three steps, leaped in there, and boom, she landed right in front of me on the ground, 
flat on the floor. Grab this pole on my prosthetic leg, begin to shake it back and forth and back and forth just to giggle. Turn around and says, Mommy, Mommy, look, it's a transformer. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, our big brother, you know, he pulled out his hero doll, moving the arms and legs back and forth, says, Oh, uh -uh, he's the Terminator. Mm -hmm. So that day, a little girl and a little boy taught me about life. You know, something bad had happened. I had to get at you, but I had to readjust everything. I had to change my goals. I had to change my dreams. How am I going to get there? What am I going to do? So I learned right there, number one, that accident happened, but i got to transform myself so I can help others transform their lives and their business. Yeah, I, I love the positive attitude. I mean, I love it, just the energy. When you and I had the first conversation, I was like, my goodness, it's like it, just the energy is there, but also the thought process behind it. Because one of the things you do, not only do you encourage, but you also teach. And you also teach businesses how they can grow. And you also teach individuals how they can transform their lives. Let's take a step back. Let's slow down and then we'll speed up. And let's talk a little bit about the three-step formula that can really radically change their life. I know that's inside of the book. And everybody got to get the book. You got to get the book, okay? But I'm asking him to give us his view of the world on those three steps that, that are there. And um, they're applicable to business owners and they're also applic applicable to everyday Folks yes. who, who work a full time job, who still give to their community or give to their church and do so much good in the world. They're just yeah. here to bless humanity. So, so, so take a moment, if you will, and talk about the three step formula. Give us, tell us, kind of frame the conversation so they know what the formula helps them to do. Okay. And then go ahead and give good. us one of the steps. You know, a lot of people always want to know what was the secret of Zig's success. Number one, he always kept God first in everything he did. So that was the number one secret to his success. But the other thing is, when Zig would get off the platform, it may be 500 people, it may be 50,000 people. Uh, he was always talking to 10, 15,000 people. He'd get off the platform, he goes to the back, he goes to sign up the books. He's not looking at the person behind to see who's the next person in line. He's not trying to see how long that line is or who's walking by. He's looking at that person right there, dead in the eye, looking at them, talking with them, getting to know them, offering solutions to them, signing their book like they're the only ones there. And as speakers, authors, and that's what we have to do. We have to quit jumping from one thing to another. The number one secret is slow down to go fast. Slow down. Invest in yourself and invest in others. After all, that's what you're speaking for, right? And that's what your business is for, right? Your business is to help you. Your business is also to help your family. But also, you've got a solution for someone else's problem, whatever that may be, that you're selling. You can't sell them a solution if you don't have your own solution. Mm. So it just goes back to just the basics. Yeah. Now, what do we say to the person like, oh, my gosh, I've got so much going on. He's talking about I got to slow down. If I slow down, does he not understand there's a snowball behind yeah. me? Does he not yeah. understand the thing's going to run me over? So it's a two part question. Question number one, yeah. how do they slow down in the midst of chaos? And question number two, um, what do you teach your clients in terms of I guess you can't really manage time, but making better choices with your time? Hey, you do. You just got flat stop. Now, you got to stay, keep busy doing what you got to do. You got to do the necessary items, but you've got to stop. You got to take time and do a self inventory. Zig would always call it a checkup from the neck up. <laughs> you really, that's what we got to do. We're starting evaluating who we are, where we are, what are our goals, what are our dreams, what's going on. Because sometimes we are so busy because we're not organized. Slow down. Go back. And that's one thing that I, taught, I love teaching and I've learned it from Zig is the wheel of life. There are seven major spokes in that wheel. Now, if one of those spokes is not perfectly where it needs to be, you've got a flat tire, right? And how fast are you going to go on a flat tire? You're going fast until you get halfway around to that flat part. Boom, 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 boom. And that's what happens to us in life. If we will come back and start focusing on what is important, make us a plan, make the goals plan. And I say a plan, that's a real plan of action. A lot of times we'll make the goal, but we don't make the goals plan. It means how are you going to get there? Who are the special people you need in your life to help you to get there? So all these different things come into life to just slow down, organize, prioritize, look at who you are, make a few little changes, and then you can speed right back up and take off again. Hmm, I love it. Slow down and speed up. Uh, I've got to take that. I'm, I made a double note on that right there because that's something I need to do. And I appreciate you sharing. OK, that was formula number. That was number one. I think, think there's three. Uh, I think it's a three step formula. So you gave us number one. We got to slow down. Uh, what's formula number two? And we're talking about contagious encouragement. Um, I'm going to ask him where you all can go get the book. You can go to his website. I'll let him tell you that. Uh, I'm going to encourage not only get a copy of the book for yourself, but get several copies so you can pay it forward to someone else. What is formula number two, my man? 
when we talk about encouraging people, we, we don't really encourage people enough. When we encourage people, it starts creating other things in our life. When you encourage people, they begin to get motivated. They get inspired. A lot of times people don't have that inspiration. And if we will start inspiring other people, help them to see the good things that are in them. What are those special gifts and talents that they have? We all are born with gifts and talents. But we take them gifts and talents and we hone those things into be skills. What do we do with those things? How are we going to do those, uh, hone them into skills? We're not a lot of times focusing on who we are and where we are and where we want to go. But as we encourage other people, as they begin to be inspired, they begin to start being creative. You know what? The creative juices begin to flow because they get encouraged. So they get motivated. They get inspired. They start getting creative. Now, what does a creative person do? They start finding solutions as well to the problem. No matter what the problem is, you start looking at things objectively. Look at them through different eyes, through different lenses. A lot of times we have those rose colored specs on. And, and you know, we all go to the optometrist, get our eyes checked every couple of times every every two, three years, you know, sometimes we got to have that corrective lens and that's what we need to do is like that checkup and neck up, take a look at ourselves through a different lens and look at the situations differently. By encouraging other people, you help them, but it also helps you by helping them and it'll grow your company because they become more invested in doing their job. As they're encouraged, my job is important. I can do this. And then you start listening to them. But a lot of businesses, a lot of uh, uh, bosses will walk in and they're so busy. They don't say, hello, good morning. How are you? And just look at them, good morning, how are you doing? Stop and listen and talk to them and really get to know them. To me, I've always said one of the greatest leaders is a humble leader. A humble leader don't mean you walk around with your head down. It just means you're humble enough to know you don't have all the answers, but to know you talk to the people that have suggestions and solutions. A lot of times they're the ones right there on the front line doing the hardest work and making the least amount of pay in their company. Yeah, you know, for those those folks that are out there right now, um, you certainly have my permission. I'm sure you have Philip's permission as well. Go and hit the share button. Uh, go ahead and hit the watch party button. Uh, Philip is here to do one thing and one thing only, and that is actually to provide you the resources that you need. And you've got to be a leader of one before you're a leader of many. So when you hit that share button, when you hit that watch party button, just go ahead and write these words. Be encouraged. Hashtag Philip. Hatfield. Just go ahead and put be encouraged because you want to encourage someone else. You want to inspire someone else. You want to push forward. Now, when you do that, after you do that, after you do that, if you put be encouraged, hashtag Philip Hatfield, then go ahead and go ahead and silently acknowledge yourself. Uh, maybe the message is not for you, but you're hearing it and you're liking it. But there's someone out there right now that needs to hear the message. And we want to get this message in front of as many people as possible during a time when they need it the most. Philip, take a moment because the one and only Eric Swanson connected us together. Yeah. And take a moment. We normally do that in the green room. But take a moment and talk about the power of collaboration, one. And then yes. number two, Eric Swanson and Habitude in the good work they're doing over there. And for those folks who don't know about Habitude Warrior, yes. go to HabitudeWarrior.com. Again, www.HabitudeWarrior.com. But Eric has opened up um, his, his Rolodex. And said, Shay, there are folks out there that want to bless others. And let me give you the entry point. And one of the people that raised his hand was none other than the person sitting on the other side of that camera. And that's Philip. I keep saying Paul, but Philip Hatfield. <laughs> well, the good thing I love about uh, uh, Eric, you know, uh, his nickname is Mr. Awesome. He got that nickname from uh, Les Brown. Les Brown heard him speak and called him Mr. Awesome. Now, what kind of privilege is that? For Les Brown to give you that kind of a name. But what he takes and he talks about attitude and your attitudes and then turn those into habits. And it's amazing what his platform is, is helping people to change their attitudes so they can change their habits in order to uh, to achieve their goals and dreams. Now, I love his platform with the Habitude Warrior uh, Conference. And, and uh, I, let's see, I met, I met um, probably been about four years ago whenever I met Eric and spoke at his uh, platform in Boston, Massachusetts, met some wonderful people there. But uh, basically, if you go to one of his conferences, you are going to meet people from all walks of life. I mean, you're going to meet people who are painters, electricians, carpenters. You're going to meet people who are successful in the real estate business, people who are CEOs sitting in the audience. Everybody's sitting there taking notes and gaming. You've got two or three days of this conference of listening to many speakers in the TED uh, Talk style. But man, if, you're, if you need something on social media, he's got social media experts. If he's got business, he's got business experts. If you're looking for sales, he's got sales. Personal development, personal development. He takes two or three days. 
and helps dive in. And there's something there for everyone. Man, shout out to Eric Swanson for all that he's doing. And of course, yes. Habitude Warrior. Um, Habitude warrior.com all right give us number three man you know they're sitting on the pins and needles they're like okay he gave us step one of the formulas give us the three-step formula that can rally change your organization and your life but you've got to go get the details you've got to get the book you've got to go get the book now is it all about the book no but inside the book is a lot more details than the time that we have right now contagious encouragement contagious encouragement well there's the person philip that believes it's possible he believes it's possible he really does what's number three my friend what's number three you know, and it's something that came, it started with a high school many years ago down in Baytown, Texas. And Zig Ziglar picked up and he kind of adapted it his way. And I learned from Zig and I've adapted it even more. But there's a little thing, and here's what I do. It's a conference, whether you're 500 people or 5,000 or even five people, it doesn't matter. I tell people, you've got to find three people, look them in the eye, tell them something you like about them and why. If you got to look them right in the eye, and you may have only known them for two, three hours, two, three days. You may have known them a long time. But you know what? Uh, a lady named Camille Levingston wrote a book a few years ago. says she's got three seconds. Our brain is so fast, we know within three seconds if we like someone or if they like us. If you're in sales, they know in three seconds if they're going to buy from you. And if you're a speaker and you're, you're an author, you, you've got three seconds getting on that platform to make that first uh, – uh, uh, impact within three seconds by walking on the stage, the first three words you say, or whatever. It doesn't matter, but get involved there and look and start encouraging people. But look them in the eye and you tell them what you like about them and why. It's the because. Now, take that a little bit further. Actually, take a little pad called the I Like pad. Zig came up with that. And you have a little pad that says I Like, and it has a blank, and you put someone's name in there like I like, and I'll write Shay in there, and then right below it says because, and then there's a comma. And then there's about seven or eight little lines. So you write a note to Shay, and you say, here's what I like about you. And you know what? As Shay picks that up and begins to read that and see what someone likes about him, and it's validated by the why, by the because, he begins to see it's real, it's genuine. Someone's not just shooting me a little line of bull here. And it's like, Wow. I really bring this type of value to that person. I didn't realize that I did that. And you start receiving value. But here's the thing. When you look someone in the eye, and you can write that little I like pad, but when you're looking them in the eye, tell them what you like about them, you're not thinking about anything negative, are you? You're not thinking about anything bad. In our society, that's what we do. We're taught to look at people, sum them up real quick. They're our competition. And so we start tearing them down before we even get to know who they were or are before they ever say two words. But you know, when you look them in the eye, tell them something you like about them, you got to think of something good, something positive. And what's a characteristic of them? Not their glasses, not their beautiful watch, or their Ferrari sitting out in the parking lot. What do you like about them as a person and as a human being? As you begin to do that, it validates them, but it validates you as more. Hmm. Validates them and validates you at the same time, man. I love yeah. your energy, man. I love your heart to give. I love your heart to serve. I mean, you're just fine away. I can listen to stories all day long. The person you're watching on the other side, uh, Philip Hatfield, he's the person that he is right now. He is truly is the real deal. Can we segment for just a moment as you got this energy boiling um, into a, a core value that we have here at the Happy Entrepreneur Show, which is today is my January 1st. And today is my January 1st represents a new start, a do over. For those folks that know what it is, you can look right below the video, look right below the video. You can write today is my January 1st. For those that are hearing it for the first time, today is my January 1st represents one of those moments. And it's probably, I don't know, one, two, three, probably 10,000 moments you have throughout a day. But you can make a decision. And when you make that decision, it forever changes the trajectory of your life, right? So you either I always like to say you either work out that day or you go sit and watch Netflix, right? Nothing wrong with that, but that's a choice. You either eat uh, hamburgers and French fries and maybe have a strawberry shake or, 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 or you go to the refrigerator, you open it up and there's some kale. I have some of that. There's some broccoli. I'll take a little of that as well. There's some spinach. Oh, this is really good. And you're like, this is a good meal. That's a January 1st moment. So my question to Philip Hatfield is when you hear, today is my January 1st, what do you hear? What does it mean to you? You know, I, I learned from Zig Ziglar. I picked it up from him. He would always say good morning to people, no matter what time of day it was. And 
I've done that for years. I didn't realize I picked it up from Zig, but just one of those habits I picked up. So no matter what time of day I say good morning to people, and they'll say good morning back, and it may be three o'clock in the afternoon, and then they'll say, well, why do you say good morning? It's because you can make a decision right now for the rest of your day of how you want it to be. What do you want it to be? Every second of every day, we can make a decision and make a change. You know what? We've got, we said, talked about the three seconds a minute ago. Yeah. You know, when someone says something that we don't care about, we can react or we can respond and taking a quick little breath and a little short breath gives us just an opportunity to begin to respond. And as we think about that, which a lot of times we're not doing, we're speaking to, to respond instead of really thinking about what we're, instead of responding, we're thinking about what we're going to respond to. But as you really think about it, you start getting your mind in gear and start thinking about other things that are more positive and move forward in those things. So what am I going to do now? So I just said good morning. Or I just said something. I can make a decision to change today. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. You can change right now, moving forward, what you're going to do. It doesn't have to wait till tomorrow. It doesn't have to wait till January 1st. Every day is January 1st, 1st and all day January 1st. It's still good morning all day long. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What was your January 1st moment? I know you had so many across your life. But what was your January 1st moment where you decided, I'm going to plant my flag I'm going to draw a line in the sand and I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Like I'm going to make this work. Like this is my time, no matter what. Yep. Well, you know, I told you about the hotel business and I, and I love the hotel business, but I'd kind of been swindled. They kind of told me a story and, and kind of lied to me. And, and so it just really didn't set good. So my first really big experience uh, with a major position in the corporate world did not set too well with me. So I looked at it this way. If I am the boss, if I am the entrepreneur, I can make decisions that the best for my company, best for my customers, and best for the people that I'm serving, my uh, everyone around me. Zig always taught me years ago, and he taught everybody we know this, but we always make decisions based on what's the right thing to do. What is the best thing for everyone involved? Not just me, not just you. So, so I've got a flooring store I'm coaching right now. And so I tell the flooring store, when you look at the decision, what you're going to do, let's say we're going to bring in a new product. Number one, is that a good product for the clients? Is it something the clients may be looking for? Is it something good for the sales guys that they can sell uh, and they can make money on? Is it good for the company, for us? Is it a product that we will be able to do well and not have a lot of claims with it and uh, problems like that? But here's another thing. Is it a good product for the installer, the guy that's got to get out there and lay it? If it's not a good decision for everyone and does not benefit everyone involved, it's not a good decision. You've got a great product that works for everybody, but the installer can't lay it right. You've got a faulty product. Or the installer may be able to get it or do it right, but then the company may not be the, the best company. Even though they've got a great price, you can make a lot of profit. It's like, ah, they may not stand behind the warranty. So if it's not a good decision for everyone involved, it's not a good decision. Wow, I love that. I love that. Said so well. You know, you may have heard this before, and this is a question around consistency. There are a number of folks, and they get excited. Like, today is my January 1st. Oh, good morning. I can't wait. <laughs> And then for whatever reason, life is a series of being on track and then we're off track and then we're yeah. on track and then we're off track. My, my question to you is, what do you share with your clients in order for them to remain consistent? That's the that's the challenge. That's the challenge. Forget it in good times. Forget it in uncertain times. Just being consistent. Because what I found the same yeah. person is inconsistent in tough times. It's inconsistent in good times. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. So I guess my question is, how do you teach your folks the hashtag? Stay the course. It's a mindset. It's a decision you make. One day, and I hate to keep bringing Zig Ziglar up over and over again. I don't usually talk about him this much in a in our interview, but but I love the man to death. Changed my life. But Zig had a program. He decided, you know what? I'm writing a book, so I'm going to stake my weight in this book. So I need to lose weight. I'm about 20, 25, 30 pounds heavy. So he wrote in the book how much he was going to weigh before he published the book. So he had to start working on getting that weight down. So what do you have to do? So he had to make a decision. He was going to get up every day. And so the first day, he's going to walk all the way around the block. Hey, he did that. Great. He walked all the way around the block. That's So the next day, he walked all the way around the block again. It's kind of like, you know, that gets a little boring and mundane, don't you? Just walking around the one block over and over. So then he decided, you know what? I need to be a little bit more persistent in my consistency. In other words, I need to do something a little bit more, a little bit extra every time. So tomorrow morning when I get up, I'm going to walk a block, a whole block, and then I'm going to walk another mailbox. Then I'm going to come home, and tomorrow I'm going to walk the block, and I'm going to walk two mailboxes. The next day I'm going to walk the block, and I'm going to do three mailboxes. You do what you can, and you do a little bit more every day. So it should be consistent, but you're being persistent. 
you're pushing, you're moving forward, and you're not having to push that hard to do just one more mailbox, are you? But it's something very simple, and it's a mindset to make that decision. Number one, I'm going to walk the block, and I'm going to do just a little bit more today. Just a little bit more. When you think there's nothing left in the tank, there's always just a a little bit more. Just one more step, one more phone call, one more email, one more message. You know, you mentioned Zig Ziglar, and I'm a huge Zig Ziglar fan. I mean, um, especially if you're part of my generation. My my question to you is, of all the Zig Ziglar stories, I'm just curious, of all the Zig Ziglar stories that you've probably seen and heard about, which which one of your favorites that resonate with you? Now, I was I was like the pump story, by the way, because you know I never seen him do it. By the way, never seen him do it. I've only uh, heard it on the tapes, and I've only watched it on the YouTube videos. By the way, I only met Zig Ziglar <laughs> one time in my life. He was 79 years old, and I went flew out there on the 79th birthday, and I yep. thought I was gonna be there with just me and him. And there was like a couple thousand people that were there, <laughs> like 10,000 people. I thought I had a special invitation, yeah. by the way, but I did get to shake his hand. He did say he'll see me at the top. And I believe them. So my yes. question to you is, um, which one of your all-time Zig Ziglar stories that really resonates with you? Well, yeah, you just talked about the pump, and that's one of my favorites. And you know, he talks about the pump, and and talks about you got to prime the pump. So, so Bernard was down in Alabama, right? And so Bernard walked up that old timey water pump, and and he wanted to get some water out of it. So he started pumping that pump, and then his buddy said, "Well, Bernard, you got to put something in before you get some out. You got to prime the pump." So what Zig said, prime the pump. So you got to put a little bit of water in, get a little bit wet, kind of prime it, kind of give a little bit of stuff to get it primed, to get it going. So you prime that pump and start going. So when you talk about the pump, I'm going to get more into that pump in a minute. You've seen that chrome pump, right? Mm-hmm. There's three of them in the world. One of them sits in the Zig Ziglar office. Another one, my friend Larry Carpenter has. Larry Carpenter was a good uh, friend of Zig's and uh, I end up born to win uh, uh, conferences over and over. And you know where the third one is? I have it. Mm-hmm. And so I take it around with me, and I'd have an exercise I do. And you may find it on YouTube somewhere. Uh, I'll may, I need to put it back on my website. But we go out, and we actually start. And so I have people come up, have them look at that chrome pump, and I tell them the stories. They get to know about the pump. you got to prime it. you got to put something in to get something out. But you got to keep pumping. you got to keep pumping. So I get them to start pumping on Zig's pretty chrome pump. So they see it come out on a little uh, cart there, and so they begin to work with it. And so I get three people lined up. So then I have another pump that comes out, and I have it rolled out. So after that person starts pumping on that pump, I start saying, okay, are you working on a goal? Do you have a goals plan? Yeah, well, let's talk about your goals. So we start getting to set a goal while they're sitting there talking about that that that, that pump and what they're doing that pump. You got to pump a little bit more. You, you ain't going to get that goal coming out like that. So then we move them to pump number two. So now you got a goals plan. Now you got to work the plan. So as they go to work the plan, we get somebody else on pump number one. We start helping them. What's your goal? What's the goal you want? You start thinking about what you want to do. They start pumping that. The other one's kind of working their plan. As they work that plan, they're pumping pump number two really good. Then all of a sudden, they have pump number three come out. It's bright yellow. Pump number three comes out. It rolls out on stage. It sits there. So once I know that this guy's getting pretty well tired and wore out, he's been pumping on working his plan, and the other guy's working on getting his goal, then I have them all move down one. So then I have this guy on that on that last pump, begins to pump that pump. And then I bring the first guy back in. And so he's down there trying to find his goal. And then the guy on the very last pump down there, he's tired. He's pumped, getting his goal. He's pumped on now. He's got his goals planned. Now he's working the plan. And as he begins to work that pump, it gets a little bit harder. And you know, Jay, he's just pushing. It gets harder and harder. And then it gets so hard, you can almost push it. And all of a sudden, man, it just frees up. And water just begins to flow out the end of that spout. And then I have someone grab that water with a bucket hold it there but then you just sit there and you can just start keep pumping and the water just keeps coming and as Zig says isn't that water nice isn't it pure isn't it clean you know that refreshing water you know after all that hard work then you finally see the benefit of what you've been working for you can feel it touch it taste it hold it in your hand that's what makes it makes life work that's what makes your business work Man, amazing, incredible. I love it. I love it. I love the story, man. This is so cool. Um, for folks that are out there watching, might be curious, like what type of folks do you work with, um, Philip, if, if you will? I know that you, you do speak. You speak on stages. You speak at conferences. You also go to companies and train companies. I get that. You also do things online in this digital space, as you're doing right now very, very effectively. Um, but So I don't have to say it. What type of clients do you work with? I love small businesses and I love people. Uh, you know, personal development is something that we started. Even though we do business coaching, uh, as Zig always says, it doesn't matter if you teach them how to make a few million dollars. If they don't have ethics and character, they're not going to keep that, are they? 
So if they're not really have a good personal development plan, and, and let's say they fooled around on the wife and wind up in the divorce, they wind up losing everything, right? So we always start with that personal development. That's a main, main aspect. But working with small businesses and teaching them how to make a real goals plan and how to work that plan. In the business world, we call that strategic planning. We don't call that really goal setting as much. But in the personal life, it's personal goal setting. So we have the same type of situation, two different things, working with people on personal development, working on small businesses, how to give a goals plan, how to get a strategic plan, how to work the plan, who are the people you need, what are the resources you need. So I love doing business coaching, uh, small businesses are, are my expertise. I love talking to, to large business and small businesses, anything 500 employees and down. But I love talking to mom and pop companies that just have two, three, four, five employees. So anywhere that I can help, that, that's what I love to do. I love it, man. How can, how can folks best connect with you right now? I'm easy. I'm easy. It's Philip. You know, Philip has Philip with two L's and one leg. <laughs> I got you, Shay. <laughs> that was good. That's Philip at philiphatfield.com is my email or philiphatfield.com is my website. But you know what? I answer my phone. I'll give you my cell phone number. I love working with people. My number is 214-912-5795. And I answer the cell phone. Now, unless I'm asleep. Now, now where's, um, what's the website again? It's my name, Philip Hatfield. All right, so let, let's all go over to let's all open up a browser. I, I love doing this when they work. Sometimes they don't, but when they work, go over to Philip Hatfield. Philip with two L's. Hatfield.com.com. dot com. And let's let's go see what we have going on over here. Let's see. Okay, they're pulling up. They're getting ready. Okay, here we go. We validated Philip Hatfield, the Transformer. Okay, we're on your website now. This what a good looking dude. <laughs> D, look at him, look at him, he's right there, he's ready. It, ready isn't that awesome, man, isn't that cool? Yo, man, it's just, it's just awesome. Now, I, I saw you I saw you have some things on here. That's right, you're in uh, Dallas, right? Yes. Okay, no wonder you have the Dallas Cowboys there. I mean, I still don't think I'm Oh, absolutely, off. yeah. <laughs> Washington, D.C., you know I'm a Redskins fan. But no. Oh, just, no. <laughs> <laughs> got to have a little fun. My, my question to you is you got leadership all over here, and I know we're – coming down the home stretch here at overtime now we got to get out of here but I, I want to take a moment maybe to share one or two leadership principles I'm, you got it right at the top build transformational leaders and so uh take a take a moment because i believe you got to be a leader of one before you're a leader of many and maybe share one or two principles that we can take away as leaders that are watching right now and then up in the left hand corner this is his number it sounds like the same number he gave us by the way which is good his number is right there and this is his email. So you can call him. He says he answers. If he doesn't answer, leave him a voice message. He will call you back. And you also have an email that you can reach out to him as well. But he's called Philip the Transformer. And then right there, it says Build Transformational Leaders. So we're all going through transformation right now. So let's find out one or two skills that we can get from Philip right now um, on how to be a transformational leader. And more importantly, if you're a leader of an organization, or if you're a leader of a small group, and you're like, hey, I want to have a business conversation. Does he get into the business of business? The answer to that question is yes. The answer to that question is yes. To ask them on this particular episode to focus on contagious encouragement. We'll have him back later and talk about just the business side of business and what that means. All right, take a moment and talk about transformational leaders, my man. Well, transformational leaders, when you look at it and uh, someone asked you years ago, what is a leader? And so you can say, well, the guy in front of me, let's, let's say if you're in a, in a traffic jam on the highway, let's say in D.C., and there's a guy in front of you, he's going slow, but there's the, the, the lanes are opened up in front of him, but he's just slow, going slow. It's like, dude, when you get out of my way, I can, get, I can go, just you're holding up traffic. Just because he's in front of you doesn't mean he's a leader. It just means he's the one that's out in front. And so a lot of times we have people behind wanting to get around the leader of a corporation or maybe the Girl Scout troop or Boy Scout troop. We have people who are really wanting to lead. A transformational leader is someone who's made a decision that they want to be a true leader. And everybody is leaders. It's what are we leading? But you want to be more of an intentional leader, one that, that leads a, a life of significance, not just success, but significance where you're investing in other people. A, a transformational leader, you have to do a self-analysis in your business and your personal life. See who you are. See where you are. Really look at your company as a whole. Where are you at in your company? What do you need to do? But a lot of it comes back to what are things that I need to do to work on myself. A good leader is a leader who has developed a leader, and that leader has developed another leader, and that developed leader has developed another. When you see leadership begin to be developed underneath you, 
you know you're a leader, but you just got to come from the heart. If you notice, one of my, my logo up to heart is heart and hands. Number one, you got to give people a helping hands, but you got to lead with heart. A lot of times in business and in leadership, we don't look at the heart. We just think it's got to be all um, uh, just discipline based. And there does have to be disciplines, but you know what? You got to have heart and you got to have a helping hand. You know what they have hands are there too? Because sometimes people need an applause. Wow, that is so powerful, so true, man. Well, first, let me let me say, I certainly I appreciate you giving us so much of your time, giving us so much of your energy, man. Once again, I want to thank Eric Swanson with Habit to Warrior for putting us together. If you haven't, go over to habitowarrior.com. Check out the site. He's doing a number of things virtually as well. Stay connected. Yeah. Make sure you stay connected with Philip over at philiphatfield.com. Again, philiphatfield.com. Um, I want to turn it over to you, my man, um, to share your closing thoughts, uh, your final thoughts or comments that you have for folks that they've got to they got to get working. Um, yep. They, they got to be encouraged. True. Um, they got to encourage someone else. True. But then they got to go to work. So what are your final thoughts, man? Again, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being on the show. We appreciate your time. Yeah, and I've loved getting to know you a little bit, Shay, in a short little time. And you are a true entrepreneur. And a lot of times we call ourselves entrepreneurs when really we're not. We're nothing more than wannabe business owners. We just want to make some money. But that entrepreneur, having that vision, what you want to do, having that stick to it, having that persistent consistency moving forward, always doing what's best for everyone involved. Keep the focus on what you're doing and, and include everyone. If you're a professional speaker, things are tough right now, reinvent yourself. There's things you can be doing. Uh, hey, I'm starting a podcast show. I've got probably about... 30 recordings, now I'm going to get ready to put them all together and put them out there. Do different things to reinvent yourself, stay focused, surround yourself with great people. That's what all great leaders do, and that's what entrepreneurs do. You have to have a great team. Well, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. For those folks that are out there, let's give Philip a digital applause, a digital applause. The way you give a digital applause, you look right below the video and say, thank you, Philip, or we appreciate you, Philip. He's given us so much of his time. We know he can always make more money. But he can't make more time. I can't make more time and he can't make more time. None of us can do that. So I want you to know that you're amazing. I want you to know that you're incredible. I want you to know for you, the best is yet to come. Why? Because you're going to encourage someone else. Today is your January 1st. Why? Because you're first going to encourage yourself. And today is your January 1st. Why? Because you're a transformational leader. And for you, the best is still yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. So with that being said, my name, for those folks that are curious, my name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember, time is long. Life is short. Live in the moment and make it count. God bless. I wish you success. Thanks a lot, Philip, man. You rock. Peace. Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> we out of here. So much fun. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, check. Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, we no matter what. Man. Got money on my mind, Man. I can never Man. get enough. And every time I step Man. up in the field, yeah. everybody yes. hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Thank you, thank you, Captain.